my name is Liliana Reza, and today I am joining you from my home in the San Diego-Tijuana border region. For the last couple of years, I have had the privilege of serving and living life alongside friends and neighbors here in the borderlands. As a campus pastor and associate director of international ministries at Point Loma Nazarene University, we seek to co-create bridges that help cultivate and sustain binational friendships with various nonprofit organizations and churches in Tijuana, Mexico. One of my favorite things about engaging um, undergraduate students and the church is the opportunity for ongoing conversations, uh, conversations and questions, uh, the types that stretch and grow us. Uh, lately, there have been two questions that have been stirring in my heart, and today I would like to invite you uh, to consider with me the following. Uh, the first is, what will be our response towards the vulnerable who are caught in the in-between spaces of this global pandemic? And the second is, what will we, the church, be most proud of post-COVID-19? The San Diego-Tijuana border is vibrant, full of expectation, resilience, and life. If you are familiar with borders, then you know they are busy. And this land border crossing is the busiest and largest in the world. The people within these borderlands know what it is like to live in between spaces. They are familiar with being stretched between two geographic locations uh, while school and work is on one side, their friends and family is found on the other. Um, yet COVID-19 has added an additional invisible layer, stretching us even farther apart. Farther apart, deep, into what feels like constant loss and grief. Uh, last week in an online conversation with friends from both sides of the border, we mourned together the news that Casa del Migrante, which has been present in Tijuana for over 30 years, had closed its doors, setting limits on accepting new migrants. They had also requested volunteers with pre-existing conditions to cease from coming in to help. Just like there are safety concerns here amongst ourselves, there are safety concerns with accepting new migrants to the casa. And there are real concerns for those currently living there and serving there. Then a few days later, I received an update from another partner in Tijuana. Adolfo. Adolfo told me that they were working on organizing a public health day for their community, a sort of check-in um, where they could safely provide basic hygiene items to those in desperate need. And while he was very hopeful for this, he found himself feeling strained, uh, strained, stretched, concerned if harm and exposure could possibly come from this good action. So then what will our response be towards the vulnerable who are caught in the in-between spaces of this pandemic? Those within our neighborhood and those al otro lado. When I heard about COVID-19, I thought of Angeles. Angeles is a part of my church family um, on this side of the border. And 12 years ago, she arrived on the steps of our inner city immigrant church as an undocumented, unwed, and six month pregnant young woman. The church made a calling um, asking for donations. Uh, hospitality, compassion came flooding in 
And I, I was not surprised. Um, my church family had taught me to celebrate, lament, and stand in the in-between, hombro a hombro. They had taught me um, that when the gospel resonates deeply in our souls, we respond collectively, juntos, through our hands and feet. Today, Angela's entire income relies on her physically showing up to work. If she does not show up to work, she cannot rely on her sick days or PTO. If she does not show up to work, she doesn't get paid. If she does not show up to work, her family does not eat. Because she is undocumented, she does not qualify for various benefits like the socioeconomic relief package that's being granted to U.S. citizens during this COVID-19 pandemic. Angeles's livelihood is completely dependent upon being present. So what if our response towards the vulnerable in the midst of this global pandemic is less about doing and more about being. And what do I mean by this? Well, what if our response is centered on Christ-like solidarity with the vulnerable in our communities and al otro lado, in their sadness, in their loss, pain, and distress, what if living into Christ-like solidarity is what we, as the church, can strive to be most proud of post-COVID-19? And what does Christ-like solidarity look like, especially in the midst of so much constant chaos and layered uncertainties? It is tempting for us to move quickly into the doing. It's part of our American culture. Instead of being present and setting aside our comforts and pleasures, um, which is good doing, may sound like the only kind of res Christian response, but that's only partial. Christ-like living um, and living into the solidarity is walking hombro a hombro with the vulnerable amongst us. And it is not dependent solely on physical proximity. Instead, this solidarity invites us um, to experience the fullness of humanity, body, mind, and soul. You know, the Gospel of Matthew tells us uh, what true solidarity looks like. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind emotions and all. And this is the greatest command. And the second is equally as important. Love your neighbor as yourself. When we respond to the most vulnerable as the church, we must do so with Christ-like love that embraces our full humanity and all its you know, layered complexities. Like Father Murphy from the Casa del Migrante said, um, we must respond urgently and with empathy to those most vulnerable. So it is my hope and prayer that juntos, together, we can be guided in creative and innovative ways to stand in the in-between spaces with our vulnerable sisters and brothers, those within our communities, neighborhoods, and al otro lado. May we not linger or sit comfortably, but instead extend far beyond ourselves in ways that proclaim true solidarity with Christ. You are not alone. We are with